Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we do praise you, Lord. We do honor you. We do thank you, Lord, for allowing us this opportunity to stand before your people, dear God, and break the bread of life. Lord God, you know that we are tired in the body, but refreshed in the spirit. So Lord, I pray now that you would refresh me. Give me a fresh anointing that I, might, that I may have strength to complete this task of preaching the gospel. Lord God, here I am again, and I am standing in the need of prayer. Lord, I don't know what it is about me, but it makes me feel better when I say, Lord, I need you. I need you now, Lord. Help us to preach as never before, like a dying man to dying men and women. In Jesus' name I do pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Well, welcome. I'd like to add my welcome to that of Pastor Kyle's and Jose. Welcome to Tapestry Church. And we are in a new series today. We are starting a new series today. And this series is called The Image of God. Yes, The Image of God series. And today we're going to be talking about, but going to be talking about in particular, created to reflect. Created to reflect. And our scripture text is found in Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 through 31. Let me read that for you. And it says, then God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over the livestock and all the wild animals and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female. He created them. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Then God said, I give you every seed bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit with seed in it. This will be yours for food. And all the beasts of the earth and all the birds in the sky and all the creatures that move along the ground, everything that has breath and life in it, I give every green plant for food, and it was so. God saw all that he made, and it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers, the hearers, and the doers of his word. Now, I want to concentrate, if you will, on verses 27 and uh, 28. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them male and female. He created them. That's verse 27. And when we think about creation, uh, creation in particular, we have to ask ourselves the question, why did God create humankind? Why did God create humankind. Well, first, I'll have you know, God did not create humankind because he was lonely. God did not create humankind to add anything to himself. You see, God exists as a perfect community within himself. Father, Son, and Spirit, he exists as a perfect community in himself. And God he needs nothing and nobody. I like to say 
about God is God, you are God all by yourself. And what I like about that is you don't need our help being God. God needs nothing and nobody. God exists as a perfect community within himself. And God, he is self-existing and unchanging. So since God is self-existing and unchanging and he doesn't need anything or anybody, why would he or why did he create humankind? Well, one of the answers is, and we will be exploring a few in this series, one of the answers is that we are created to reflect. Yes, when God created us in his image, God created us to reflect or to be a reflection of God in the earth. In God's love and grace, God created the first humans in his image. And the phrase, uh, after our likeness, it makes it clear that the image is, in some sense, a resemblance of God. Not necessarily in physical appearance, but we are like God in personality. We are like God in mind. We are like God in will. We are like God in emotions. And we are like God in freedom. Listen, we were created to reflect or to be a reflection of God here in the earth. We were created to reflect God functionally. We were created to reflect God mentally. We were created to reflect God morally, and we were created to reflect God socially. Let me see if uh, I could make this plain. Um, reflecting God functionally. God's purpose in creating human life in his image was functional. Humans, we were to rule or have dominion. And the word dominion means to rule or to power over. That's what dominion means. And, and God, God has sovereign power over his creation. And watch this. He has delegated that authority. He has delegated the authority to humankind. And in God's command to subdue the earth is a command to have mastery over the earth. Is a, is a command to have mastery over it. And with the authority to rule, watch this, comes the responsibility to rule well. I'll say that again. With the authority to rule comes the responsibility to rule well. Listen, we were set up to have dominion over the earth and given the job of reflecting God in this world. And being God's image bearers, we bear the responsibility to act as God would act. We bear the responsibility to act as God would. Reflecting God mentally. Humanity was created to be rational and volitional beings. We were created with reason and choice and this my friends is a reflection of God's intellect and a reflection of God's freedom when someone makes something or creates something like a computer program or something like a beautiful poem which Meredith often does when when they do that when he or she is proclaiming the fact that we are made in God's image and we are a reflection of God in the earth. Reflecting God morally, humanity was created in righteousness and innocence. Watch this. This is a reflection of God's holiness. In Genesis 1.31 it says, God saw all that he made 
and that it was very good. And this includes humankind. This was including humankind. And, and our conscience, our conscience is a trace of that original state. Our, our conscience is a, is, a, is, a, is a trace of that righteousness, of that innocence, of that original state. And when someone feels guilty, or when someone obeys the law or practices good behavior, he or she is confirming the fact that we are made in God's own image and that we are a reflection of God in the earth and reflecting God socially. Whether you know it or not, we were made to and for fellowship. That's why November 28th is important. We were made to and we were made for fellowship. And fellowship, what it, re what it does is it reflects God tri God's triune nature as Father, Son, and Spirit coexisting in loving community. Yes, it, 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 it reflects God's triune nature as Father, Son, and Spirit coexisting in loving community. God said that it was not good for man to be alone, so he made the first woman. And every time someone hangs out with a friend, every time someone meets people, Every time someone goes to church, what he or she is demonstrating, he or she is demonstrating the fact that we are made in the likeness of God and that we are a reflection of God in the earth. God, what he did was he created us to be reflections. He created us to be reflections of him. And only humans are uniquely created in the image and likeness of God, distinguishing, distinguishing them from all other earthly beings, all other earthly things. Only we can say that we were created in God's image and likeness. We were made like him so that we could be in fellowship with him. We were made like him so we could be in communion with him. We were made like him so that we could be in relationship with him. And being in relationship with him, what that means is uh, uh, God, he transforms us into the image of Jesus Christ, the son of God, the preeminent and perfect image of God. Colossians 1, 15 and 16 says, the Son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. We were created in God's image. Listen, we were created in God's image, but Jesus is the very image of God. Jesus Christ shows us what God meant when he said, let us make man in our image. Us, we, we still bear the image of God, but we also functionally, we also mentally, we also morally, and we also socially bear the scars of sin. But the good news is that God redeems us, and he begins to restore us in the original image of God, and creating a new self uh, that's created to be like God in true righteousness and in true holiness. That redemption is only available by God's grace through faith in Jesus Christ as our Savior. 
through Jesus, we are made new creations. And through Jesus, we are made new creations in the likeness of God. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for allowing us to stand before your people. Lord, and if there was anyone today that does not know you, we pray, Lord, that they got a proper introduction. Dear Lord, and we ask that you would save them. Right now, God, in the stillness and quietness of their heart. Holy Spirit, do your regenerating work and exchange that heart of stone for a heart of flesh. In Jesus' name we do pray. And then, dear God, for those of us that know you, Lord, like I always say, we pray that we will be, that something was said that we will be saltier salt and brighter lights. That people would see you working in us, moving in us. The love of God would shine so in us that people would come asking, what must I do that I might be saved also? We thank you for hearing us, dear Lord. Thank you for today, and thank you for your preached word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen.